Okay, so now, once again, I got cut off by this stupid little encore thing. Um, next, what we, we actually have everything we need to actually begin graphing the very first coefficient. So we already defined what lift coefficient was, and we know what Q is, we know what L is, we know what SW is. So we can go ahead and actually begin graphing it. Uh, we need to make sure we add these uh, little dot guys here so it doesn't yell at us about multiplying matrices with bad dimensions. So now let's begin graphing it. So what we want to do is if you if we actually look in this data matrix, uh, just believe me that this uh, this column right here is the elevator angle. This is the rudder angle. It's kind of useless to uh, graph everything in one, so you want to actually isolate the rudder and the elevator values. So what we can do is we can just do a little bit of Boolean algebra here. So I guess really quick it would make a lot of sense to go ahead and define something called elevator and rudder. So elevator, ELV for short, and we're going to do the same thing that we've done for a long time. Matrix colon comma H HDR dot and let's go find elevator. And we'll suppress that output and then we'll copy paste it down here and we'll do the same thing for rudder. So we'll name that RUD. There we go. So we want to actually go ahead and we want to select all the values in this matrix angle of attack that meet the condition where the elevator is the same and the rudder is the same because we don't want to use the same plot and graph the ele different elevators in the same series of data because it would not give us useful results. So we'll just go ahead and use this naming convention. So let's do I underscore E zero R zero. So that's just called uh, elevator zero and the rudder is zero. And we will set that equal to this command. It's find elevator equals to zero and oh, where's the and symbol? Uh, there it is. And rudder equals zero as well. So what this is going to go ahead and do is it's just going to go find wherever the rudder is equal to zero and the uh, so the elevator is equal to zero. So I'll go ahead and just kind of show you what this will do. Let's make sure I suppressed all of the results. Yes, I did. So go ahead and run that. What is it yelling at me for? It is yelling at me for this. That is because this is a capital Z. There we go. So there we go. This, lo and behold, this is what it gave me right here. This returns these row numbers. So it tells us where this happens. So at row one, it happens for zero. It happens again, it looks like row six. Sure enough, row six, 11, and so on. So that's what that does. So we'll go ahead and begin just defining other ones as well. So we'll just copy and paste this. So we'll define this on the next one. It'll be called EMR0. That's uh, for elevator max. The maximum elevator is 18 for this aircraft, as you've seen in this data matrix. So it looks like, yep, the maximum is 18. And likewise, we'll do the same for the minimum. And we're just going to kind of ignore the rudder for now. We'll do that some other day. So there we go. We'll actually name this E lowercase m for minimum. Too bad minimum and maximum have the same first letter. And we'll suppress those outputs as well. So there we go. Now let's define a new, since we're going to plot it versus uh, angle of attack, that would be pretty useful. We'll define these values, our x values. That's going to be equal to the angle of attack times this new variable, or of this new variable. Remember, this new variable tells us it has the uh, row values of where this condition is true. So an angle of attack of zero elevator, that's where the not comes from, or the zero comes from, we can just go ahead and write I, e, or I underscore E zero R zero. And that should give us the angle of attack, or yeah, it should give us the angle of attacks. Now what will that give us? Yeah, that will give us the angle of attack of all those conditions. So 
everything's suppressed, I'll go ahead and show you. So there you go. It displays the angle of attacks where this is true. So it looks like, well, of course, I basically when I did this, I just did uh, at each angle of attack, I just did one where the rudder was zero or zero eighteen and or zero thirty negative thirty, and then the elevator was zero negative eighteen and eighteen. So I just did one of every one. So this is how you can go ahead and pick all the variables that we want out. So next, what we want to do is we'll go do the same thing for every for the other three or other two. So we'll call this one x maximum. This one will be x minimum. And then it's just going to be equal to the corresponding variables. So this is E M capital M, or and this is E lowercase m. Go ahead and suppress these outputs. So there you go. Now we have what we want. So let's define our first figure. Woohoo! So what this one will actually be called, this will this will be called that's where is it? There we go, that's the comment sign. I was doing a bunch of Perl and I got the wrong comment uh, key. So we'll just call this one CL versus angle of attack. So figure one. Let us go ahead and define our Y. So our Y0 is going to be equal to the coefficient, much the same how the angle of attack worked, we're going to call the coefficient of this same variable right here. So I'll just copy and paste this variable. So that'll give us all the coefficients of lift for this case right here. Likewise, we're going to be graphing it against this one right here, or yeah, this one right here this angle of attack. So we'll get basically we'll be just gra graphing angle of attack versus coefficient of lift for the specific case where elevator is zero and rudder is zero. So we'll go ahead and copy paste that three times for all three cases. So we'll name this Y max, Y minimum, and we'll correct these. So that's capital M and that is lowercase m. So there we go. Now we got our Y values. So let's go ahead and graph it. So what we do is we just do plot x, y. So I'll plot, ah, move my mouse out of the way, plot, we will plot x naught, comma, y naught. And that is pretty much all we need. Let's go ahead and graph it. So this is our plot we get right there. It looks kind of rudimentary. We'll go ahead and, in a bit, we'll actually go ahead and start editing these to get our axes and title and best fit line and data. So once again, uh, uh, if any, if you know anything about flight, this is our angle of attack versus CL curve. Uh, coefficient of lift, as you see, it actually goes up linearly with the angle of attack until it hits this point up here where it stalls. When it stalls, the actual airflow over the wing, it becomes the angle that the airflow has to travel to maintain attached to the wing becomes a lot harder that it just becomes detached and that's when turbulence happens and that's actually when you stall. So from this graph you can actually tell what your maximum angle of attack is and from this graph it's kind of looking about 12 degrees is about the maximum this aircraft can handle before it will actually start to stall and lose lift because it, it still has some lift but it becomes unpredictable. So what a lot, a lot of the stability controls you actually use this linear portion is where all of your equations are valid. So after that being said, we'll just start going on how to make these graphs a little prettier and make them look better.